practice. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the PHDJ podcast. This is Joe Bunn, and that right there is Mike Walter. Hello, What's Joe. up, Mike? How are you, my friend? I'm good. And of course, good. as promised, we brought back two of our favorite uh, DJs in the world, uh, Mr. Brian Bonacici, live. Actually, it doesn't look like he's in New York. Where are you right now? You're usually in New York. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I'm in a hotel. <laughs> I can uh, tell that. Where? <laughs> I don't even ref- know. Refinery Hotel. But uh, what city? 30. Oh, New York. New oh. York City. Yeah, I had to be here because uh, I have to be at a venue in like 45 minutes. So oh, I just okay. think it's I funny that you, you have a newborn at home and you're sitting yeah. this thing. And <laughs> I was about to say, this trying is to get a good night's not, sleep. That's yeah, all. Tara's like, hey, Tara, what? take care of this kid. Yeah. I, I, I got to get a good night's <laughs> sleep. <laughs> and we've also got straight from the Dirty Jurors, my man, Jason Janis here too. What's up, dude? What's, what's, up, what's up? What's up? What's up? Welcome back to the show. Uh, we, we let these guys or they agreed to stay on for another quick 30 minute episode on a topic that we got from our uh, pseudo producer slash avid. Oh, listener. I thought this was your original. <laughs> no, Joe. no, oh. no. I, I never really come up with my own. I'm you'll come be up honest. with one eventually someday. <laughs> We've only been doing this five years. Someday you'll come up with your own ideas. <laughs> someday I'm going to come up with the brilliance. I think I did have a month ago, a month or two you ago. I, you no, were I'm like, yo, you're on a hot streak. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, um, Mistakes that we made business-wise. We're not going to talk about our personal mistakes today. Maybe that's a future episode. (laughs) Uh, We are pre-recording this, by the way, just to give you that little caveat. Mike and I are hitting the road for a couple of conferences. and so. um, But some mistakes we made in business along the way uh, that we, we wish we hadn't done, and we hope that... We're catching you before you do them. How about that? So I think this will be. I had somebody helpful. ask me, um, actually, just last night. Uh, he said, if you could go back 10 to 15 years and do something differently, what would you do? And I think it's mm. the same type of question. It is. Like, yeah. Uh, like, what would you, now that you, knowing what you know now, yeah. what, what do you look at as could be a mistake or you might have done differently? So should we let our guest start? Yeah, man. Yeah, you guys. I, mean, I know we kind of sprung this one on y'all, but, but did either of y'all want to go first? Brian, you have a couple little notes, things that you've kind of not done. Yeah, well. I mean, I can mention one here. Yeah, I please. mean, I, I think the biggest lesson that I wish I would have learned early on is the importance of uh, having an attorney <laughs> oh. to review my contracts. Uh, yeah. Especially this year, it was sure. good to know that I had that buttoned up pretty well. Yeah. And um, the second one, it's kind of right behind it is having um, a mentor. Mm. Um, I try. I don't think there really was a ton when I was coming up. Like it, re- YouTube wasn't a thing. Like I just had to kind of learn from hard knocks. And all of now, us, all four yeah. of us, really. Yeah, same way. And, now, and nowadays, like it's it's a little bit easier for us to find people like that. And I wish I would have had that. So if you don't have that right now, I would encourage you to look at both. Well, I think it's interesting on your behalf or, or on the way you're coming from it, because it's twofold. Number one, I know you do either weekly or biweekly. You, you are a coach. You have a group that you are actively mm-hmm. coaching, but then I think either weekly or biweekly, you hired a coach. I'm in one. Like, yeah, I'm yeah, in. I got right. three. So that's, yeah. So that's super interesting to me. You know, somebody that, you know, ha- has enough knowledge, has enough experience to actually coach other DJs and make them better, but is still willing to learn. And it goes back to what anybody here would tell you. If you go to these DJ conferences, we're not out <laughs> signing autographs in the hall, like letting our heads get inflated. You'll see me and Mike sitting in those rooms for 99% of those talks. Like, unless it's something that I just simply don't do, like mitzvahs or something, I'm going to be in those rooms when I can. And I'm sitting in the room. I'm actively engaged. I'm listening. I'm taking notes. Like, Jana's the same way. Brian's the same way. When we can be in those rooms learning from other like-minded individuals, we're going to be. So I, I, I applaud you for that, man. I need to – that 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 will be a goal of mine for 2022 is to actually find one of those groups and be in it because I, I would love to be mentored, quite frankly. I, need, I think I need that too. Right? I need, I need someone to steer the ship. Someone to help there we me. go. Somebody smarter than me. Right, exactly. Jay, you want to throw in a couple of your um, flub, flops, flubs, mistakes? Yeah, I, I think um, if you want to talk about HR kind of like related areas, I mm-hmm. think, um, you know, I think one of my biggest mistakes was I was very naive when I was younger and I just took things for I like instantly gave trust or instantly gave opportunity. And I, 
mm. should have used better discretion um, into bringing people into my space um, because the, the byproduct of that was when you have um, personalities or, or people in your space that, that aren't good for that space or bring mm-hmm. some type of toxic, you know, presence. Bob. Mm-hmm how quickly it can impact so much more than just you as the captain of the ship, you know? Um, So I kind of have adopted a very quick, very like, it's almost like unforgiving policy when it comes to like certain things where I just know like, Hey, I've been impacted so much and not that I'm not willing to give someone a chance, but you know, like if I, feel that something is not right i literally will pull out of it the the minute i, I don't even care where it's at or how mm-hmm. deep i'm in i am mm-hmm. like i don't care what i have to deal with because the headache of just letting people just do this or just let it keep going has has caused so much stress and unneeded yep. stress into my space that was probably like one of the biggest lessons i learned and then a, from a another lesson i think a lot of people could pr- hopefully gain from in our space is don't ever cut corners. And I I think that's something that I've tried to like live my life by and and for a lot of different reasons. And I'm not going to go into like practices or the craft. I think if you just think about investing your money into equipment and Mm. cutting the corner to buy the, the, the less expensive this or the less Mm -hmm. expensive that it's always burnt me when I wanted the better thing. And I could have saved another whatever number of weeks and then just done it. And, you know, there's shortcomings and shortfalls and certain things matter and certain things don't. But if there's something that you have your eye on or you desire to have, like you do this. And I think the tools that you use are so important. So like, Mm. don't ever cut corners. Every time I've cut a corner, you end up spending so much more money because you cut the corner and buy something cheaper only to just go and buy the thing that you should have brought in the first time, you know, Mm -hmm. Because mm-hmm. the first breaks or doesn't like give you what you're actually looking for. And you can relate that to media equipment. You can relate that to gear. You can relate that to DJ boost. You could relate that to equipment, like go right down the line, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's something I, I live my life by now, even in like personal life, you know, it's like, you don't look for always the best deal. You look for like the best value for like what you're spending, you know? And you, you there's a difference between the deal and value, right? Like, you get a service at a certain level. DJs are so quick to say like, Oh, I should be making this. or I'm, I'm worth this. And they're the first person to ask for like a discount when they need something. It's like, it has always boggled my mind. And there's weird you're right. people that do that more than others and whatnot. And obviously everyone does want to hook up, but if you're not willing to give something back, you know, when you take it's, it's like, that's, that's probably another thing, right? Like always don't just take from people like give back and, and share, you know, I feel like Mike and I have come up in an area that's so when I came oh up, it was God. so guarded and so cutthroat and people were so shitty and like, there's no need for it. You know, like Mike's given his whole life back to this industry mm-hmm. and, you know, for, and what has it done? It's allowed other people to like thrive. And I look up to Mike for that because like, I think that's so, and he has suffered none. And he suffered none. Like his business is bigger now than it ever was. He's he can he can you know retire whenever that is a hundred years from now, knowing that he also spawned a thousand other DJs' careers or helped a thousand other DJs to be better, to to work harder, to everything. Man, it's just you look at it, people just keep everything together. No, I don't want to yeah. give my edit away. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to share that. I don't. And it's like why? Like yeah. Together we you know, grow. Jason, I was told I was told that early mm-hmm. on by a very prominent DJ when I started speaking. Why why would you want to share your knowledge with anybody? Yeah. Why? And I was like, dude, I, I believe in the rising tide raises all ships mm-hmm. concept. Mm-hmm. I also believe I when an industry has has helped me out that I should give back to it. I believe mm-hmm. in these things, karma, whatever you want to call it. So mm-hmm. uh, I chose to ignore that person's question and and I and I plowed forward and I and I don't regret it at all at all me neither i'm gonna neither. i'm gonna go back and highlight the first thing you said jason yeah. because i have made probably the biggest mistakes in my career are personnel related yep and i've come to learn the you know the saying when somebody shows you who they are believe them 
uh, and I've ignored that too many times in my life where I'm hot and heavy about somebody because they have one extraordinary talent. Maybe they're incredibly good looking or they have a great voice or they're a great mixer. And so I ignore all the other stuff that is going to come back and bite me in the ass later. And I plow forward and I just won't do that anymore. Um, I, you know, at the PJ, uh, PhDJ uh, workshop that Joe and I used to do, mm-hmm. I had this great photo. I don't even know where I found it, but it's this super hot woman in kind of a see through y dress. <laughs> so you can kind of see her bra and panties. <laughs> And I go, look at this picture. And everyone's looking at it. And I go, do you see what's happening? And she's being attacked by Godzilla behind her. But nobody sees that because you're looking to see if you can see whatever underneath the dress. And I say, that's the mistake I've made with personnel. I have looked at that and ignored that. And I'm just not going to do it anymore. So personnel-wise, Jason, I feel your pain. I hear you. And But the one thing I do seek solace in, and I'm sure you do too, is that there are more victories than there are losses. And, 100%. Yeah, we wouldn't so, be able to do this if it was exactly. not constantly yeah. like that. But like, right. you know, the thing, I, 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 did, I did a post on this on, on Instagram. It was like, I've been stolen from, I've been lied to, I've been made fun of, I've been, you know, let right. down, disappointed, burned, you know, like, yes. just like every shitty thing that could possibly happen. I'm sorry, I know you're not supposed to curse on this. No, no we, we, we yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, it's like as a business <laughs> owner, you don't, you're not prepared for that. And like when at first I used to take it so personal and then I'd be like, oh, well, just like let him go. Like I was like a glutton for punishment. Like I wanted more. Like, oh, just, don't do it again. And like, mm, if someone right. does it, they're going to do it again and again and again. And like, you just put yourself in these, I've called you many of times, Mike, where I'm like, yep. mm-hmm. dude, how do I even, I don't even know what the hell happened or where I'm at right now, but like, what do I do? And Mike's like, yeah, you're, you're done. Yeah. Like <laughs> that, that sucks, you know, like, but like Cut every, through it, you know, and, 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 and whatever. So that's, but big. again, for every one of those, there's the Tom Monaco's and the Dominic Sestitos and the Phil Walsh and the Jake Thompson's and, and blah, blah, yeah. blah. And, yeah. and the guys that are loyal and hardworking and stick around and go above and beyond. So as many times, just like you, Jason, as, as I've been like, oh, fuck it, I want to quit this. I go, yeah, but it's not worth it. It's, it's the, you know, in the long run, you're, you're better off. Uh, but yeah, I, I, if I could offer some advice to the listener, it's early on. Um test out your people early on and and if they are untrustworthy believe them you ain't gonna change it mm-hmm. you ain't gonna you, you, you ain't mm-hmm. it's it's interesting you know emotion, right like right it's interesting because you know a lot of what all three of you guys have said i was uh, are on my list you know I, I said i didn't train some guys well enough that was kind of my fault threw them to the wolves too early or i spent too much time training them and in my head i was like this guy's not or this girl's not bun dj company material you know but again they were good looking or they had that one skill set i was like man this they such a charming personality whatever but the other things i mentioned were, were basically money related um whether it was spending too much like on rent or you know like i, I mean mike i'm so envious of you i think you got one two payments left on that building which is i got really two nice payments place. left yeah. i'll be done with my mortgage by the end of this year and and that's one of the things i was going to mention so i know it's awesome. kind of a cop out it's not a mistake but if i could have if i could have done it sooner i would sure. have i wouldn't sure. have rented that place for 10 years basically giving the landlord a half what a was million it? dollars yeah. in rent yeah. over damn. 10 years when i could have been putting that rent in my pocket i should have done it sooner but i did it 10 years ago and yeah i got two payments left i'm super psyched definitely still on my next 50 years goal uh i didn't save enough money period like i mean and it wasn't because a pandemic came i just i didn't do a good job when i was younger Spent too much, didn't save enough. Um, but Joe, you're only 50. You're not 65. True, and and like Randy Bartlett talked about two weeks ago on this yep. uh, podcast about retirement, he didn't start till he was later and he's still okay. I mean, his big complaint is that he doesn't own the lakeside the bigger mountain uh, house, house yeah. but he still owns a mountain house to retire. He does. So, yeah. so it's not too late, especially with the income that we're making. I mean, yep. I, I hope our listeners have worked their asses off this year, but also made some bank. Um, yep. Hopefully you put some of that away. Put away. Yeah, yeah. Put it away. Yeah. Um, and then I think, you know, that, that we've all been guilty of this, uh, again, just money related, undervaluing myself, leaving money on the table. You know, I, it wasn't long ago, I, under under 10 years ago, where if we got nine ninety five for a show and that was to, you know, take out everything, 
we were high fiving in the office. Nine ninety five. I mean, I won't leave my driveway now for less than four thousand dollars. Like I'm just not going. I'm not coming. Sorry. Randy will call me and be like, these people have this. No, you go do it then. You know, or send one of the other sixteen guys. I'm just not going to do it. And you know, I've been doing this for so long. I, I know what it's worth for me to to be out there on a. I don't care what night it's. If it's on a Monday or a Saturday, I don't care. By and, the way, let me interpret that for our two guests. Go ahead. Four thousand dollars in North Carolina is like fifteen k up here. <laughs> it so might be fifty k. Yeah, just so you guys can get some perspective on that. Uh, <laughs> the cost of living is a little, it's, a little it's easier a little down there. Easier down yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm just not going, you know. And and the, it, it again, we raised all the prices across the board. You know what I mean? The the guys make more money. We do less shows. We have less headaches because of we're not dealing with the the kind of riffraff budget clients anymore. And and um, anyway, that's that's my my money spiel there. Anybody else? Brian, Anybody else Jay, I got one more, but I'll, I'll let our guests. You got you guys? You got anything else? Could be. Um, no, <laughs> good I don't. You. I that's just good. Wanna, it's but good to want to have others. The, the, the contract thing, I didn't really, uh, you know, drill down on it. But I will say, like, there's to cutting corners to Jason's point, mm, you know, like mm. that's one area where people are like, ah, oh, just go on Law Depot and yeah. download a legal the Zoom or whatever. Right. Or whatever. Right. And if this pandemic didn't teach anybody anything, the money that I spent, and I, I lost a partnership, um, you know, few years back and I, we didn't have any agreement yeah you know yeah, between yeah. ourselves i'm not even talking about between clients and no, period. yourself yeah. but just in general just to look over your stuff and i will never make that mistake again because it ended up costing me a lot of money mm -hmm. that if we would have had an agreement in place that was rock solid with an exit plan and all of that the buy sell agreement and all that stuff it, it's worth its weight in gold and you might be like oh, i don't really want to spend two thousand dollars on this agreement it's going to save you in the long yeah. run so yep. find twenty thousand two hundred thousand right well, uh, it kind of goes back to what Jason was saying about about uh, you know DJs always looking for the cheapest thing. Yeah, you know? yeah. listen, lawyers spend a lot of time and, and money getting themselves educated, and they command you know the good ones especially command a good rate, and you should pay that. It's worth it, you know. Yeah, I, I, I do want to say this. I'll piggyback off off of what Brian just said. It, it and I had this on my list. Sorry, it just. Surround yourself with personnel. In other words, you can't do it all yourself. I tried to do it for too long. Have office admin. Have somebody go out to your shows with you to shoot content, which we're going to talk about on the next episode. you like how I segued that? Um, a, a bookkeeper, an accountant. Like, these people need to be on your team. I don't care how big or small you are. There is no way you know all the tax loopholes. There's no way you can do your taxes. I don't give a shit about those online H&R block things. Please get a bookkeeper, get an accountant, get an attorney. Like these people don't have to be on full-time retainer. There's somebody you might use once a year, twice a year, but please, please, please don't try and do all this stuff yourself. Admin, social media, marketing, there, there are so many resources out there from Upwork.com to to virtual. There's 10 virtual Fiverr. assistant sites. Fiverr. I, I mean, please don't try and do everything yourself, guys. I did that for way too long, and, and it just it's not going to work out. You're either going to run yourself ragged or you're going to make a mistake that's going to cost you a lot of time and money. And, and even if neither of those things happen, you're <laughs> taking yourself away from valuable time that could be you could be doing Anything. something that bettering your business uh, or that yeah. you love or like yeah. your family or, right. the, you know, or, or, or going out for a run or getting in shape or, or, you know, going to the beach, whatever it is, like you're taking right. away valuable time doing things that you don't like to do. And it's just, right. it's, it's going to burn you out. I promise you. All right. So Joe kind of teased what our next episode is going to be yeah. about, and that's and that's content, and and that's kind of going to kind of be my last one too. And this is another one, not necessarily a mistake, but if I if I'd known the benefits, I would have done it sooner. We started a photography division ten years ago, and it has been gold for us. Yeah. And I wish, if if anything else, I wish I had started it twenty years ago, mm -hmm. uh, because the 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 amount of incredible pictures that my photographers yeah. get of my staff um is is worth its weight i mean i'm i'm a third a one third partner in a photography business so i don't exactly make a killing financially from sure. it I, you know it enhances the bottom line but i'm certainly not retiring from the dj business for what i make on photography but that's just that's the third or fourth reason why it's worth it sure. the the um 
the the content, the um, synergy when I work with my photographers and videographers is incredible. Uh, the camaraderie when you're out there in the field working together, there's just mm. so many benefits. And the backlash has not, I know, I know so many people hesitate because they think it's going to send shockwaves mm -hmm. through their industry. I, I'm still very good friends with most of the photographers in our area. Yeah. Whatever disappointment they had a decade ago that, oh, Mike Walter started a photography division, doesn't he have enough money, blah, blah, blah. I, they've gotten over it. I, and I, I go to bridal shows and I, I, I shake hands with photographers when I work with them out in the field. I don't feel any animosity. So it's not, don't not do it out of fear of the yeah. backlash, but just understand the incredible benefits. Uh, do it with quality don't just say hey i'm gonna shoot yeah. photography and start and that's one of the things i'm super proud of my my photography division they do great work they're beautiful pictures beautiful images and i'm 40 weddings behind looking through weddings for content that's how that's how Crazy. you know yeah. rich it is as far yeah. as as far as uh content that's what we're going to talk I, about anyway, i um so, so. i mean if you're watching on video i saw these in jana's office three or four years ago i just i know i was going to compliment your yeah, your but, backing here i mean Joe. but this again is awesome beg, awesome stuff. begged for that begged for yep. that Saquon right. shot that that was out with me begged 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 right. begged 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 you know like yeah. th these are all begging that I got these yeah. like Mike has just literally like has trillions and you know, on a hard drive just sitting on his desk right now. So right. super cool. Um, man, this was good. This blew by. I know, I know Brian's got a dip. Jan, I, you got, you got one more in you, man. You're, you're yeah, kind of the I, I king love, of content. If you can I do this last one, media. Jason, I think okay. you're going to be your contributions <laughs> to this is going to be great because you get some, anyone who doesn't follow Jason on Instagram and, and uh, socials need to do, need, need Ooh, to do it ASAP do you ever. And you'll see what we're talking about in this next episode. Cause Jan, I gets and his team and not just Jason, but his whole team gets incredible Smash. images as well. Smash. So that's going to be next week's topic. Sounds good. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Jason. Thank you, Mike. And uh, we'll see you guys next week talking about capturing content. Ciao.